Welcome back, Seth Bling here. Yesterday in a live stream, I completed the world's first ever sub one minute speedrun of Super Mario World by warping into credits using a new route I came up with. The previous record was set almost exactly a year ago by Furious, and this new record cut almost 20 seconds off his time. The routes are actually very similar. The bulk of the time save comes from an alteration I figured out, which allows us to completely skip repeatedly spitting out red shells at pixel perfect X coordinates. The secret is to utilize a total of four controllers and two multi-tap devices to input additional code without performing actions in game. As with the previous route, I manipulate several memory locations by doing various things with a red shell, including duplicating a Yoshi block, despawning Yoshi's egg shell fragments at precise velocities, and making sure certain graphics appear at certain spots on the screen. For example, the white splat that appears when you kick a shell. Then, by performing the item swap glitch, I make the game start running code from somewhere other than the game cartridge. This code ultimately puts the game into credits mode and ensures that gameplay continues as normal rather than crashing like you'd expect from the item swap glitch. The processor in the Super Nintendo is always reading instructions from some part of memory. Normally it reads instructions from ROM, but it's capable of reading instructions from RAM or other registers built into the Super Nintendo. With the old route, we'd trick the Super Nintendo into executing instructions first from a part of RAM that's used for graphics, then from the joypad auto-read registers, which contain information about which buttons are currently being pressed, then from the sprite x-coordinate table. By spitting out shells at pixel-perfect x-coordinates, you could set up some code in the sprite x-coordinate table to do whatever you wanted, including playing the credits. In the new route, the controllers don't send the processor looking for instructions from the sprite x-coordinate table, but instead tell the processor to run some code from a couple locations in the game cartridge itself. Here's what the joypad auto-read registers look like. There's eight bytes of data, which correspond to four controllers. Normally, if you only have one controller plugged in, six of those bytes are just zeros. However, in the old route, we plugged in a controller in the second controller port and had five buttons held down to set five bits to one. When the processor started reading that data as processor instructions, it told it to go off to the sprite X coordinate table. By plugging in a multi-tap in each controller port, you can actually modify all eight bytes of data. In this case, the first three bytes tell the processor to jump to the middle of a subroutine in the cartridge, which causes some unexpected effects, and then it returns processor execution back to the controllers. The final three bytes jump into the middle of another subroutine on the cartridge. The compounded effect of these two calls is that the game enters credits mode and the processor returns to executing normal gameplay from the cartridge. It took quite a lot of research to find the two perfect places to jump into ROM to create this effect. Considering that you can't press left and right or up and down at the same time, and that four bits out of every two bytes are not hooked up to any buttons and will always be zero, there's a lot of restrictions in the code that you can actually write there. This route is coming ever closer to the task credits warp, which is timed at about 42 seconds although that is timed from power on, rather than when you gain control of Mario in the opening cutscene. I expect the time to come down further, and Dots Are Cool has actually already beaten my initial time by a couple tenths of a second. If you want to check out the route or technical information, there's a couple links in the video description. That's about it. Thanks for watching.